Chalky Gamer here. So today we're going to do another Let's Play of a PlayStation VR game. So today's video will be covering Until Dawn Rush of Blood. So we're playing a short segment of this game. I uh, don't want to ruin too much of it for you guys. I want to experience it for the first time. Because this game is a horror game and it has a lot of jump scares. So if you're playing it for the first time, then jump scares might surprise you. So we're only going to play a small little portion of this game. Uh, it's a pretty cool game. It's very much like a horror but it's on rails because you set on a roller coaster and you kind of go through these different kind of environments. It's pretty cool. Let's go check it out now. Okay, so today we're going to play Until Dawn Rush of Blood. So this is basically a roller coaster horror game. So we're going to be playing at the second level because the first level is more like a tutorial level, sort of like a shooting range, so it's not a whole lot of interesting. So we'll start on the second level to get right into it. As you can see here, I've got my move controllers in the move shooting attachments. Um, it's not designed to be played this way, but you can get away with playing this game with these attachments. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, but you can just use the move controls on their own. You do not need these gun attachments uh, if you're not worried about it. Uh, but I think it's pretty cool because it feels like you're actually holding a gun then. So we're we'll playing this one, A Nightmare Descent. So let's go ahead and play this one. And we'll just play on normal. Let's begin. Well now, listen up, listen up. Things have taken an unexpected turn, and I'm the first to admit that we need things corrected. Now, there's just Let's one see the body thing. Don't be in a roller coaster. You've inhaled a gas. And while there's no harm in it, there is one little side effect. You may start to see things that aren't really there. Which is why I hesitate to bestow upon you this kind of firepower. But you'll need some protection. The psycho who's done this is still at large, so I advise you, move on. I advise you to beware. So we got some shotguns here. We're heading into this giant pig's mouth. You can see this game is pretty dark. It adds to its atmosphere. And the sound is really good in this game too. And the loading screen for this game is like a baby's head. And the sound design is very good. And the jump scares are plenty in this game. Bunch of pigs. Get the lean left and right. See all the carnage around here.
how we go down a roller coaster. So you can lean left and right in this game sometimes. You can feel the heart and how strange this game is as well. down again. can't see how weird it looks but the scale looks really strange now all warped and everything um, it really puts you in a weird kind of haunted house feel everything feels like it's at a wrong angle and this is where leaning sort of comes into play as well because you feel like you're there Really kind of um, weird vibe. That's the thing with this game, always be reloading because you'll be shooting constantly most of the times. And the scale is really immense. So that was Until Dawn Rush of Blood, a cool horror game for the PlayStation VR. So, firstly, this game is basically a horror game set on rails. Uh, you're on a roller coaster, you're going down these different environments, sort of like a horror haunted house kind of feel. Uh, lots of jump scares in this game. So, if you're into horror games, this game is awesome, perfect for you. If you're not into horror games, or you get scared really easy, this game might not be for you. Um, if you're affected by horror games, then you might get quite a few scares out of it, because there's a lot of jump scares, a lot of jump scares. And there's um, a lot of different creatures, a lot of different enemies that come at you, and because you're in VR, they feel like they're right here sometimes. So, if you really, um, if you do get scared by horror games, then... This game might be a bit too intense, but if you're not, and you're like me, and you like playing horror games, um, then awesome. Uh, this game is awesome. Um, I really enjoyed it. I don't know why the press sort of gave it bad reviews. I really like this game. Not only do you feel the experience of being in a roller coaster on VR, but you also get the experience of having these creatures come up to you in VR, and looking around these kind of settings. Uh, scale is very important in these types of games, and it nails it. I mean. When you're on the roller coaster, if you're going over like a bridge area, you can look down, you can see the depth that you're actually quite high up. Um, the characters that come at you, if they're small or if they're large enemies, you can tell that scale. Um, when the environment warps around you, again, it, it really feels like you're there. And on top of it, they make it more immersive because there's moments where you have to sort of lean left and lean right and duck as well when you're in VR. And that actually makes you feel even more there. Uh, that's why I suggest if you're playing this game, play it sitting down because then you feel more immersed because obviously your character is sitting in a roller coaster. So play it sitting down and then that'll make you feel even more immersed, especially when you're kind of um, moving left and right and ducking because it feels like you're there and you feel like you actually are ducking these obstacles. Now, this is primarily a shooting game. You'll be doing a lot of shooting. 
Um, now I've played it using these things. So the move controllers inside of the move shooting attachments. You do not have to use these guns. You can just use the move controllers. The first time I played this, I played just with the move controllers. But then I tried it again with the move shooting attachment. And I have to admit, you can get away with using these attachments. It's pretty cool, because it feels like you're actually holding a gun. Um, and it works just fine. Not many VR games you can get away with using the actual move shooting attachments, which those were for PlayStation 3, um, when the move was sort of in its era. But this game, if you do some adjustments, you can get it just right, that you can actually use these attachments while you're playing Until Dawn. And it does make it pretty fun, because it feels like you're actually holding a gun. Now, in the game, because you're shooting a lot, you obviously have to reload. There's two ways you can reload. If you're just holding the move controller, you can press the move button on the top there. So if you were just holding the move controller, you'd be just pressing that and clicking. But another way is you flick downwards. So whenever you see me shooting and then flick downwards, I'm actually reloading. Now, you reload... It depends on what weapon you have that you're reloading. So if you've got like a shotgun, you'll be reloading more often because it doesn't have as many shots. But if you have like a, a pistol or an automatic weapon, then of course you might have a larger magazine, so you don't have to reload as often. But because you're shooting so much, you need to reload. This game, you need to basically be reloading constantly, um, so that you can actually shoot at enemies, because the enemies just come at you. Um, when you get those moments where a whole bunch of enemies just swarm you, then you're just constantly shooting left and right and left and right. And the game does a really good job that if you get kind of cornered and you're behind shooting them, you, you feel like you kind of want to creep backwards, you feel like it's encroaching in your space. So it's a really cool immersion, this game, and it really does feel like these things are overwhelming you. Um, and also when the, the kind of creatures come, each level has its sort of own kind of, I guess, boss creature type thing that comes at you, um, and each one feels very different, and the way they come at you and the way the level ends is always different per level. Now this game is, you can play this game probably in a couple of hours or so, depending if you have breaks in between or if, it, if you play it just solidly. Um, it's actually a quite a good game. So would I recommend getting this? Yes, absolutely. Um, this is a cool game. It's very cheap as well. You don't have to pay much for it. It's not like a full price game. So for what it is, I think it's pretty good. Uh, ignore the reviews, the press have given it, because I actually quite enjoyed it. I had no issues with jittery guns or camera or weird like glitches, I guess, in the game. I had no problems with that. I played it just fine. And on top of it, it didn't give me any motion sickness at all. So I didn't feel anything weird after playing the game or anything like that. Yeah, when you go down the roller coaster, you sort of feel a little bit strange because you feel the movement, but you don't actually feel it like a normal roller coaster. But it's still a quite a cool experience. Like I really like that kind of thing when you're going down the roller coasters, you're kind of going around. Um, it's actually pretty cool. It gives you the really feeling like you are going down a roller coaster. So this game is fun if you like. If you don't want the movement heavy games, this game is fun. Go ahead and play it you shouldn't have a problem. Um, you might get, you might have to still get a bit used to it, because obviously it's it's going a little bit of movement. The roller coaster will go fast, then it'll slow down, then it'll go fast again, and then it'll slow down, depending what areas you need to shoot in. So it's not too bad, but there are moments where it goes a little bit faster, and if you're not quite there in VR, it might feel a little bit, but you'll get used to it. It won't take you long, maybe like 10-15 minutes and you're good to go. That's why the first level is sort of like a tutorial, that's why in this playthrough I play the second level, because it gets into a little bit more, shows a little bit more, and it's got a, um, some in more interesting things in the first level, because the first level is basically a tutorial where it's basically a shooting range, and you're just shooting bits and pieces here and there. So guys, that was Until Dawn Rush of Blood. Um, it's a pretty cool game, and because it's such a cheap game, I would absolutely recommend going to get it. If you've got PlayStation VR and you're looking for a very kind of short horror experience, then absolutely go get that. It's pretty cool. And like I said, um, if you want to play it with normal move controllers, you can. But if you want an extra experience, you can pick up these PlayStation Move shooting attachments. Or if you have them, if you had a PS3, you might already have them. Um, then go ahead and use those because they're pretty cool as well. So, and they work fine. You may, when you first start the game though, to get these working, just do a little bit of adjustment. And just um, basically keep resettering until you feel it's quite comfortable. Um, that's all you have to do. Unfortunately, most VR games, you can't get away with it, but the way um, Until Dawn is designed, you can get away with using these things, and they are pretty cool. So you guys, thanks for watching. I am Sharky Gamer. If you like this video, hit that like button, and be sure to subscribe for more Let's Play of PlayStation VR games, as well as heaps more controller reviews. Thanks again for watching, guys.